I absolutely love blackened salmon. And after you make this recipe, you will too. It's incredibly easy to make and absolutely bursting with flavors. I know you're going to love this recipe. The art of using blackened seasoning for anything comes from Cajun style cooking. It was perfected though by the late great chef Paul Perdome. The one thing that I absolutely love about blackened seasoning is that you probably already have most of these ingredients already in your cupboard, making it a quick fix and a great way to enhance literally anything. Of course, we're going to do salmon in this recipe. We are going to start off with that seasoning and show you how to make it. Sound good? Let's cook. You know how much I love salt, so that's exactly what we're going to start off in this spice rub. So go ahead and add some sea salt or kosher salt to a bowl. Next, I'm going to add in some onion granules, followed up with some garlic granules. Now, I like the granules better than the powder, but if you only have powder, that's fine. I'm next, going to add in some dry oregano, followed up with some dry thyme. And then I'm going to add in some paprika, followed up with a little bit of ground white pepper. Nice and spicy here. And of course, for even more zip, we're going to add in some cayenne pepper. And really, at this point, what I'm going to do is just stir all of these ingredients together. So if you really like spice, my suggestion to you is add a little bit more cayenne, add a little bit more white pepper to suit you. Now, how do you know this? Because I always suggest you taste it. Stick your finger in there. Try it. Does it need more? Does it need less? Make this work for you. I have a little bit of a rule of thumb when it comes to making rubs, whether it's barbecue, Mediterranean, does not matter. I do a sort of two part salt to one part everything else. So if I'm using two teaspoons of salt, I'm using one teaspoon of garlic granules, onion granules, cumin, herbs, whatever it is. There is an exception though to a few things. So if the flavors are really intense, like a cayenne pepper or a pepper in general, I take that down in half again. So instead of one teaspoon, I may just use a half teaspoon of that. Now, if it's something that provides a lot of color and not super overpowering in flavor, I think of things like paprika, sometimes curry powders can be rather light in flavor. I actually do that times two, so I make it equal to the amount of salt. So it's two teaspoons of curry powder or paprika. I hope that makes sense. Now what we're going to do is prep up a potential sauce that I may add in the end. So go ahead and slice the ends off a shallot, cut it in half, and then of course remove that outside layer just like when cutting an onion. And then I want to small dice it. I'm only going to use about a half of this half of piece because I don't need that much shallot in this sauce recipe. And of course, the next thing I'm going to do is run a few whole garlic cloves through a garlic press. I always tell you I'm sick of chopping garlic in this life. So garlic press it is. And of course, there's a link on my website to this one that I use because I get that ass so often. Go ahead and put in a bowl, set it to the side and break out of the refrigerator our fresh salmon. I always suggest using wild caught. It's better for you. It's much more natural. If for some reason you don't like salmon, you could absolutely substitute in your favorite fish. Now, obviously, I'm using this blackening season on salmon, but don't stop there. I mean, think of all the wonderful things. Chicken, pork, pork chops, a steak. You can put it on the grill, too. It doesn't have to always be cooked in that cast iron skillet. Also, vegetables why not please 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 get creative my friends i want to see what you make here's what we do now so let's go ahead and set the salmon to the side get out another plate what i'm going to do is add some olive oil to the plate or any other oil you could use safflower grape seed, totally up to you and then add in our blackened seasoning i like to add about two teaspoons of blackened seasoning to one tablespoon of oil. That's just a rule of thumb I have, and each of these is for a filet of fish. So go ahead and mix this together until it is completely combined. You just want to make sure all the dry herbs are nice and moistened. And then adding a filet at a time, put it right in there and move it around on all sides. Make sure it is completely coated in that blackened seasoning. This looks absolutely fantastic. And go ahead and put the other fillets in there alongside of it. No big deal. We don't need to transfer the other one out of there. And what I like to say is, if you want even more flavor, let this sit in the refrigerator for 20 or 30 minutes. It will be absolutely amazing. I don't think you need it, but if you want more flavor, you can do it. So now I'm going back over to my cooktop. I'm going to add in a little bit of oil. We still need to create a barrier between the blackened seasoning and the pan. Turn the heat only down to medium this time. 
I already know what you're thinking, Chef Billy. You always say high or medium high heat when getting to that smoking point. Now, the reason I only have it on medium is I can still get to that smoke point. It's just going to take a few more minutes. And the reason I do it on medium is you have to remember the spices that are in that blackened seasoning. They are going to tend to burn and cook very quickly. So if I'm already on medium heat, the pan isn't quite as hot as high or medium high. Plus, if I turn it down, it's going to go even lower, and it is going to save your blackened seasoning from burning to your salmon. That's why it's only on medium. That's why you should do it. Now, once it begins to lightly smoke, remember we're only over medium heat. This is perfect. We are going to add in our salmon fillets one at a time. Make sure to create some separation in between them. We're not steaming. We're trying to get a nice little sear on them. This is absolutely perfect. And just like when I pan sear any protein, we're going to turn the heat down just a little bit more, maybe low to medium, and this will make sure our blackened seasoning doesn't burn. So after about three minutes or so per side, let's go ahead and give it a flip. You see that beautiful dark crust on top? It is not burned. That is exactly how blackened seasoning looks once it's finished cooking. When it is done, what we're going to do is just set it to the side on a pan to rest it. I had to switch over to a spatula here because I didn't want to break up the salmon, but it smells and looks amazing. So at every restaurant I've ever worked at, we always took temperature on salmon. Medium, medium well, medium rare sometimes. And I suggest you do the same thing. Salmon doesn't need to be eaten at well done. In fact, it can dry out really easily if you do that. I prefer a medium to medium well. And for these eight ounce salmon fillets, I'm looking at probably three minutes per side to get to that perfect medium to medium well. If you want it longer and you wanna cook this thing through, go up to about four to four and a half minutes per side. If you like it a little rarer, maybe just do it about two minutes per side. That's just me. Now, if blackened seasoning is a little bit too spicy for you, but you like it, there's obviously a couple things you can do. You can back off of the amount of cayenne pepper in there, like I explained, or make a little butter sauce to counter those spices to sort of neutralize it, but add great flavor. So why not make a butter sauce? Let's do it. Here we go. Go ahead and drain off that oil, maybe rub it down with a little paper towel, put it back on low heat. We're going to add just a tad bit of oil here. Now what I'm going to do is put in the small diced shallots that we chopped up, followed up with the finely minced garlic. And then with a wooden spoon, we're just going to mix this maybe one minute. Just until you smell it, it will be lightly, lightly brown. Now add in some white wine. I prefer Chardonnay here, about a quarter of a cup or so. And what we want to do is at this point squeeze in the juice of one half lemon. I always put my other hand there just to catch any seeds from falling in there. See there? Perfect. And now what we want to do is cook this down over low to medium heat until au sec or almost gone. So once the liquid is almost completely gone and absorbed, this is perfect timing. Remove the pan completely from the heat. Go over to a cutting board or a countertop with a towel underneath. Add in some cold unsalted butter and swirl that pan all around. We are going to make a delicious white wine butter sauce here. This is perfect. If you need to grab a whisk, go ahead and mix those things in. But to make sure the sauce doesn't break, add in some more cold butter. This will keep your sauce nice and thick and absolutely delicious. This looks fantastic. So what I'm going to do is finish off with just a little bit more lemon juice for a little more lemon flavor. And of course, as always, we want to season it up well with salt and fresh cracked black pepper. Just continue to swirl around all of those ingredients until they're completely combined. And to my chefs in training, my comies, my comie chefs out there, I say it to you in every video. It's all about understanding these fundamental basic cooking techniques and putting them into practice. We just made a perfect homemade blackened seasoning. I showed you how to cook it and apply it so it doesn't burn by using those medium to medium low temperatures. I'm telling you, all homemade food from scratch always tastes better and you can do this. I promise you, put it into practice. You got this, my friends. Now, of course, let's plate up in slow-mo. Why not serve this up in the pan? So I'm going to add in some lemon slices just for show, just for making things a little bit fancy. You definitely don't need to do this. I'm going to put those salmon fillets right on top of those lemon slices in the white wine butter sauce that we made. And of course, for a little garnish, a little chopped parsley, you could use chopped herbs as well. And man, oh man, check out this beauty.
Seriously, I can't wait to see what else you all make with this black and seasoning. Please let me know. Share everything to all my social channels. I want to see what you did. Be sure to subscribe to my channel, like and share this video, and definitely check out this video right here. I made it for you. I'll see you on there.